Today's episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron was made possible by Sound Gym. Sound Gym is an ear training application designed specifically for music producers to help you identify differences in things like EQ, stereo positioning, compression, and basically every other aspect of production. Sound Gym offers a very unique ear training program that's not only fun by gamifying the process of ear training, but incredibly practical and useful for producers of all skill levels. If you want to get started training your ears and improving your sound, you can use the link down in the description and help support the channel in the process. <clears throat> okay, it is now mid-February, which means that about 64% of you have given up on your New Year's resolutions. And yeah, same. For the last three months or so, I've been working on a major, major client project that's due out later this year. I'm extremely excited about it, and it has been the stuff of f***ing nightmares. Every time I would get an idea, I would feel like it wasn't good enough by the time I got it done. I would give up and start over, and when I would, I would often spool myself out, get frustrated, and wallow in self-pity. And sometimes I would get an idea, and I wouldn't be even willing to simply try it. I would just stomp it down and leave it where it was. But in the end, there is no escaping the boss fight. Whether you're working on your next song, a new album, or starting up a collaborative project with a friend, eventually, it all comes down to the boss fight. The boss fight always has requirements. You need to complete the previous levels, you need armor with at least 50 damage resistance, you need the arsenal of weapons and explosives, you need the right skill tree points, and you need that mod that turns your pit boy into pictures of Mommy Tay. But to get to the boss fight, we need experience and experience always comes at a cost. There's a balance of intuition and experience at play at any creative project on any level. Even outside the world of creative work, there is an art and a science to balancing going with your gut and going with what you know may offer a solution. That little goblin nerve of inspiration is often the bearer of those intrusive thoughts that just make a creative project more interesting. But why is it that eventually it seems that we tend to just stomp the goblin. Every time we get a creative idea, there's one critical moment above all others. Do we do this shit or not? This is the spark that gives us the kindling, that gives us the fire, that gives us the mana potion, that gives us the magical gooey filling we can explode all over our hands and ears and eyes so we can in turn explode it onto the hands and ears or other orifices of others. But of course, the thing with sparks is that they're extraordinarily easy to snuff out, even if for no real reason at all. Why is it that we give up so easily? I think the most obvious cause of giving up is simply the fear that we face in failure. It's not super fun to work really hard on a mix to show it to someone and have them say, wow, that sounds like shit," or to work really hard on a client project for them to reject the direction or just cancel it altogether, or to... I don't know, say, show your wife a really funny bit you worked on for a YouTube video for her to say, you need to shower and stop looking at your analytics constantly. Failure isn't really an endpoint, as I talked about in a previous video. It's just a way of learning a lesson and applying it to the next attempt. It's really just a worse way of looking at the idea of experimenting. But there might be some other not-so-obvious layers to this piss onion that tend to cause you to stomp the goblin. Not really something I thought I'd ever say there. One of the strongest ways to learn to see something through is to simply find your why. This is an idea popularized by Simon Sinek's book, Find Your Why, and it's repeated over and over throughout the self-development world. But it's actually something that's really useful to sit down and actually spend some time thinking about. If you're gonna start doing something, why do it? Why do you want it in the first place? What do you gain by doing it? And why are you here to do it? For artistic endeavors in particular, this is some really heady shit 
it that's hard to nail down precisely, but they are absolutely questions worth answering, at least as best you can. If you feel like there's a purpose to doing the thing, then it's worth exploring other avenues that may come to mind to get there. Another easy way to kill the spark is to simply have a lack of flexibility. Our ability to make our process malleable is absolutely crucial to not only get the work done, but get things off the ground and see things through. Katie Milkman, an economist and researcher, once conducted a study on habit building that found something pretty interesting. If you want to build a habit, the best way to do it is to be flexible. The study asked two groups of people to go to the gym in exchange for small financial rewards. The first group was asked to pick a preferred time, while the second group was offered more flexibility in that they just had to show up. The study ended up finding that those who were afforded more flexibility attained more of an ability to stick to the idea of going to the gym. The problem with rigidity is that it doesn't necessarily equate to consistency. If we miss our creative mark, we simply give up. If we don't hit that proverbial 6 p.m. gym sesh, then we just don't go. And then we spend the rest of the evening sitting around telling ourselves that we'll try again later. Our creative goblin nerve has the benefit of leading us down some interesting roads and exploring interesting solutions and ideas, but it does also inevitably lead to a lack of focus and definition without knowing how to balance that creative instinct with the refining hand of an artist. A creative project isn't finished by adding it to the pile, it's finished by knowing that what's been added and what's been done is all that's truly necessary. So, to borrow a lesson from my corporate latter days, if you want to follow that goblin nerve of instinct but still be effective at getting it done, you have to be smart. A good plan has to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Exploring every idea is a great way to get things started, but you have to have a reason to allow them to keep being explored. If you want to see results, you have to give yourself some kind of metric for knowing when something is done or necessary or contributing. You can't expect the world of every single moment of the creative process. There has to be an end goal in sight, as nebulous as that may be. The idea and the project has to be relevant to your purpose. If you want to make a good song, cleaning the kitchen counters probably isn't going to help you, and sitting on YouTube watching your favorite mustachioed baritone likely isn't either. And if you really want to get something done, you can't leave it open-ended. It's better to have an end date than a whenever approach, if you actually want to get something out the door before succumbing to the vicious cycle of perfectionism or I'll get back to it syndrome. Perhaps, though, the root of all creative evil is simply a good old fashioned lack of discipline. Sometimes we're just not willing to admit to ourselves that we simply want the end result more than we want what it takes to obtain it. I think the easiest solution to this is that if you want to control yourself, you have to control your environment. If you're trying to stop drinking soda, the best way to do it is to stop bringing it into your f***ing house. If you find that you're getting distracted with every idea that comes up because of notifications or needing to check the tiny internet box, disable your internet for a bit. If you constantly get stuck tweaking in sound design land instead of finishing the song, force yourself to work with presets to get the basic idea down. If you can't finish the script you're writing for a YouTube video because you keep watching YouTube videos and telling yourself it's research, just get the fuck off of YouTube. Now, despite all the rah-rah chest beating and fanfare here, and as much as I'm sure we'd all love to sit here passing around free PDFs on why we're all fucking amazing, sometimes the truth is things just fail and you do need to give up. But you need to give up the right way. And I think there's a good way to do this while hearing out that little goblin nerve before you go crushing the creative spark for the billionth time. If you truly need to give up, then you have to give up with confidence. The confidence in giving up really just comes from basic reasoning. Are you able to actually present a clear and concise argument as to why this has to come to an end? But there's a lot more to giving up than just qualifying it with five seconds of self-loathing and bitching and moaning. The idea of giving up isn't really the right way to think about terminating the process. The better way to think of it is simply knowing when to quit. You have to compare the cost of what you've already done versus what it will cost you to continue. You might look into creating new options. Is there a way that you could save this project? Is there maybe a way to pivot things that might make sense? Is there anything else that might be worth doing as one last ditch effort, even if it is extreme? You also have to know and appreciate that you're simply not in control of everything. 
If you've started a new boutique film photography business and a new craze of cat filters takes the world by storm while there's also a flood in the last major film factory which in turn increases the price of film exponentially, that's really just not something that's done by your own hand. Sometimes the circumstances simply exceed the determination. Ultimately, you can't sulk in the loss of a creative project. Knowing that you've dedicated the time and exhausted your options and ability is plenty of reason to boot out and get back to work on something that may be more worthwhile. Failure isn't always something you have to hold yourself accountable for. Your failures aren't equal to your reflection. With creativity, sometimes you have to learn to just trust your gut with the intrusive thoughts and leap before you look. This often means taking risks, especially big ones, but I would also argue that big risks are often the ones that are the most worth taking. Trusting your gut to get the spark going is one of the easier ways to find yourself in new and interesting creative territories, and it can help break you out of your shell to grow into that next iteration of your own creative body of work. That being said, learning to trust in that creative goblin nerve isn't really what it takes to see things through to the end. Inspiration is a great start, but discipline is what finishes things. Okie dokie, Smokies. That's the, uh, that's the old piddle on the puddle here. A homework assignment for this might be to go out and try creating something purely based on that first instinct. Don't censor the process, just do. The first thing that comes to mind and see where it lands you. Give yourself a couple of hours and see what happens. It might be really surprising. It might be total garbage, but you know, you're never gonna know until you try. If you enjoyed this video and you want more videos like it, you can support the channel with any number of ways down in the description down there. If you liked the video and want more of them, you could subscribe. It's free. I make videos and they come out on the internet when I am done making them. If you want to become a patron and get exclusive spicy stuff, you could do that. And until next time, go home. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And of course, as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. Mm -hmm.